going on out there in the land of YouTube? What's going on out there in YouTube land? So I'm just gonna pull around the uh, corner here and, and get to the shade, get to the shade real fast. Cause there's, it's the, it's five o'clock here in Oklahoma. And, uh, and so that means that there's gonna be some shade here. And I'm gonna walk you guys through a couple of things. Uh, I wanna show you guys some stuff. I really wanted to stay in that little zone right there. My little protection area right here. There we go. Okay. I don't know if I'll get any, hopefully I don't have any Wi-Fi problems. I'm still pretty close. Man, those trees back there look really nice. If I have any Wi-Fi problems, I'll drive out of here. But I'm just gonna take five minutes and go over just a couple things and then I gotta take a long drive back out to where I am today. So, a couple things. Boom, this looks like a great place to take a pause here for a second. Okay, so, okay, how you guys doing? How is everybody doing today? What's going on? What's going on? Do me a favor, hit the like button. Hit the l -l 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 like button like you are <sighs> possessed. So, a um, couple of things. What's going on? Hit the number one. Let me know where you guys are watching from. Philly's in the house. What's going on, Philly? Philly, 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 Philly. Ooh, man, I see a nice patch of shade even better than this tree. And it's right there. Wow. I'm going to take this patch of shade right here. I'm just going to take it right here. Oh, man. This looks like a nice little patch of shade in the Oklahoma sun because I got to drive for two hours after this. So I wanted to take this time with you guys and go over a couple of things that happened today that on the fly, I really didn't have time to talk about it. But now that I have a moment, let's address the dunce cap of the day. Dunce cap of the day. His name was JL. His channel's called The Dividing Line. Can someone post that man's channel? Because the guy comes up to me. I mean, this is Dunce Cap. And by the way, this is not just Dunce Cap of the Day. This is not just that. This is actually an educational seminar right now. I'm high as giraffe balls. What's going on, Playboy? What is going on, Playboy? What's going on, Playboy? What is going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I, I'm high as giraffe balls. Um, it has been around for a while. So let, let me get into this because I want to I wanna cover this as succinctly as I can because I really do have a two-hour drive, and believe it or not, I got three hours of sleep, so I'm absolutely just bushed. And um, there's so many things that... Oh, this finger's not working. There's so many things that I want to tell you guys. Um, um, Lauren De Laguna's in the room, everybody. She's about to take the Arizona State Bar. Lauren, how are you feeling about ready to take the bar? How are you feeling, Lauren? How are you feeling? Lauren is um, the, a representative of the conservative side of uh, politics. I, I have some conservative leanings myself. But what I want to do right now is I'm going to show you guys the dunce cap of the day. And at the same time, I'm going to give you guys a, a real good educational lesson in understanding the social contract. You guys have heard so many conversations, people about me calling me a status, saying I'm for, the, for, for, I'm for a, a government that's gonna rule over you. Well, what I'm gonna show you, good luck tomorrow, Lauren, is a little bit, so Dunn's cap of the year, the guy walks up to me today and says, good luck, Lauren. He says, hey, I want to ask you about the social contract. And I said, what social contract? And he said, the American social contract. And I said, well, which one is that? And he said, well, there's only one social contract. And I said, no, no, no. There's multiple social contracts. But just so you guys know, I'm going to 
rattle off five or 10 minutes of stuff on a screen right here. And then I'm gonna get on the road and I'm gonna talk with you guys. And I'm just gonna continue to espouse the things I'm showing you because I've already seen the things I'm showing you and I've already watched the videos that are in the comment section. I've, I've already researched these things already, but these are great introductory tools to understanding the social contract. How many people here have heard about the debate I've had about the social contract? How many people took the time to research what the social contract is and what it means exactly? Where did it come from? Why is it there? You're just born into it. You don't have a right. And there's no way to get out of it. So, um, you know, and a lot of people, you know, I'm going to open up with a Wikipedia page and a lot of people will say, oh, Wikipedia, you obviously have never done research if you've never used Wikipedia. It's an amazing resource. But this is that one of the two Wikipedia pages. And what this says is social agreement redirect here. In moral and political philosophy, the social contract is a theory or model that originated during the age of enlightenment and usually concerns the legitimacy of authority of the state over the individual. Social contract arguments typically are that individuals have consented their explicit explicity or to, or tacility to surrender some of their freedoms and submit to the authority of the ruler or the, the, the decision of a majority in exchange for protection of their remaining rights or maintenance of the social order. The relationship between natural and legal rights is often a topic of social contract theory. So, so now you're starting to understand that you give up a little bit of your freedoms to live under a social contract. The term takes its name from the social contract, French, du contract social, all principales du <laughs> droit politique, right? A 1762 book by Jean-Jacques Rousseau that discussed this concept. Although the antidotes of the social contract theory are found in antiquity, in Greek and in Stoic, philosophy and Roman and canon law, the heyday of social contract was the mid 17th to 19th century when it emerged as the leading doctrine of political legitimacy. So, so now as you go down here, I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'm going to go to the names here. You know, you have Thomas Hobbes here. And then as you keep going down, you're going to have Hugh, Hugo Grotius, Gro I don't, I, I'm not going to pronounce it properly, Samuel Van, Van Proofton, right? John Locke, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Immanuel Kant, you, you know, all of these people. So the social contract isn't owned by America. We are not the only social contract. Matter of fact, we're, we're one of every other nation except for the Barbary Coast. And so when the dunce cap of the day came down there today, what he doesn't understand is that there are multiple kinds of social contracts. And just to give you guys a little bit of the research, just, just so you guys can see it, you know, you're going to have Voltaire's social contract, which his big thing was the separation of church and state. And that's still a part of our constitution today. So Vol Voltaire had his, his impact, total subjugation of the individual. John Locke's main theory. He was the proponent of limited government, his theory of natural rights, to argue that governments have obligations to their citizens, have only limited power over citizens, and can ultimately be overthrown by citizens under certain circumstances. Thomas Hobbes, he's gonna he's gonna write the his social contract in Leviathan in 1651, one of the first ever penned, and he's gonna dictate the course of the social contract, stating that bellium omnium contra omnis, that if you don't live under the rule of law, that you will, you, you, it'll be a war of all men against all men. And, and Hobbes is, 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 I mean, you can't even read Leviathan. You can't even read the book. Good luck. Try to read it. Tell me all about it. Come back and tell me how smart you are. Everybody always wants to say me, tell me how smart they are. I can read it. I can read it. 
Okay, then read it. Tell me all about it after you do it. You know, John Locke is, is English. So, so the social contracts are all different. Now, we live under Jean-Jacques Rousseau's social contract, but the dunce cap today had no idea what if there was even more than one. There's Marxism. There's, there's Immanuel Kant's social contract. What's that one about? Do you know? I mean, do you know? Dunce cap of the year? I mean, it's just... It's the epitome of stupidity. And, and this is... And, and just so you guys know... This is what is going to set me apart from the trolls. They, they don't have this knowledge. They didn't spend the time doing the reading. They have no idea what they're saying. They don't understand the philosophies of America. They don't understand the foundation of this country. They just don't get it because they haven't done the reading. You have to do the reading. The guy today was like, guy today was like, oh man, you don't even mention the Federalist Papers. I said, you must be new to my channel, dude. <laughs> you must be new to my channel. So I, I got some delete laws business cards so that when I see cops and they ask me who I am, then I can just, I can show them who, who, who I am. I can just give them my business card now. And then, the, and then they, they won't have to wonder who I am anymore. I can just give them my card and then we can be friends after that probably. <laughs> I mean, I hope we can be friends. I hope we can be friends. <laughs> Let me, I mean, I wish I could tell you guys everything, but there are some good things right now going on inside of my heart that are, that are just absolutely amazing. There it is. I'm, I'm 90 minutes away from where I have to go right now. Okay, 90 minutes away. So now that I showed Start you guys, now, 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 now that I showed you guys, oh my God, did that go out? Hold on. Smile, Kyle. Did you did, did that? Did that? Did anything go out over the thing? Sorry to hear that, man. I'm sorry you're not doing well. Give me one second. Let me just fix this real quick. There it is. Now I got that fixed. Okay. We shall proceed. So we shall proceed. London in the house. What's going on, London? How you doing? Good to see everybody. And so we are continuing down the path. You know, I just thought it was the funniest thing that this guy approaches me today and he has no idea the subject matter of which he came to discuss. He doesn't have any idea what he's talking about. Like he literally has no idea what he's saying, none. And he wants to come and have a discussion. Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Can everybody put that right in the comment section? Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Where is Waldo? Where's Waldo? Is my Bluetooth on this one off? Hold on, let me check my Bluetooth, make sure it's off. The sound will be a lot better. It sure is off. Yes, indeed. So now I've got a 90 minute drive. I got to drive 90 minutes right now. So 
it is what it is. It is what it is. Man. So, you know, it was a it was a long day. I, I mean, I really need a nap. I mean, I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but I'm tired. But I did not get a nap at all. I, I only got three hours of sleep last night. And then I had to get back on the road this morning because it's such a long distance to, to Tahlequah. But, you know, maybe Brian from High Impact Flicks can join us tomorrow morning and he can come and film it. That would be amazing. You guys should, you guys should ask Brian from High Impact Flicks to come and join us tomorrow. We'll be at the Tahlequah Courthouse if he wants to come down. There's, there's definitely going to be a crowd tomorrow. There'll, there'll be a couple people. There definitely will be a couple people tomorrow. There really is. Am I, you, you, guys, you guys think so? I, th I think there probably will be a couple people tomorrow. So that's going to be, that's, that's always a little difficult to, to navigate a lot of people, you know? It just always is. You know, so. What's going on, Tribe? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Good to see everybody. Ape shoot, what you have you have rights, cops have duties. What's going on, Playboy? What's going on, Playboy? What is going on? You know, yeah, I, I would like to I would like to ask Brian if he wants to come, but I think I think that he's been I, I'm not sure if he was in town or not. I don't remember. I'm just not I'm just, I'm, I'm just not sure. But that would be great if he was here and he could come down because we're going to be right here in Tahlequah, and uh, Brian's been really helpful. He's, he's a nice person. So, and then. I, so there's, I wanted to go into this, to this kind of long dissertation about the social contract right now. I posted a bunch of links in, in the description and there's one guy in there, he's a, he's a Brit and he talks about John Jacques Rousseau and he goes into great detail about Rousseau for 21 or 22 minutes and you guys should really give that give that a listen because it is really good yep I tell you what I bought this van to drive it and I have driven it I have driven it and I have driven it I mean I'm all in on this thing <laughs> I'm driving a million miles an hour you know it's so funny because a lot of the things no buffer, you guys all right? Oh, it's just this. So this, the the fan itself in my in my van is super loud because it is 101 degrees right now in Oklahoma, and it is so hot, so hot. I didn't I didn't see the question, Todd. So what was that question? You can repeat it. But I did not see it, amigo. Man. Yeah, everybody should should hit the like button. I'm so sorry, you guys. Everybody hit the like button if you would. I didn't. I didn't. I have to make sure I remind everybody because it's such a mundane, silly thing to have to hit the like button, but it helps. It helps the algorithm. And no, the what's what's so what they're listen. It's not. Trust me. I have the analytics. I see what's really going on. Um, on my lives here, there's there's a few less people because the trolls are, what they're doing is they're downloading the videos and watching them on back streams. So I actually prefer it that the trolls are not here. I would rather they watch it on back stream. And remember, remember the movie 300. I would rather have 300 badasses who are warriors that have put up with all of this trolling and fighting than 3,000 people and 2,700 of them are just garbage and going to fall off as soon as it gets hard. As soon as it gets hard. And by the way, you know, I don't want to speak anything into it. You know, it, it's just it's just really easy to, uh, you know, it's a gotcha game in America, right? You know, what what we get you doing? We gotcha. You did something, you know, so, 
So these people haven't been able to find a witness on me or find any paper trail on me that I've done anything wrong. So there's, you know, this a gotcha moment somewhere trying to come towards me, you know, trying to that that JL today guy. He showed up there. Then when I walked up to the guy, I said, hey, man, turn off your music. And I was just a little animated. All of a sudden, I'm going to attack somebody with cops behind me to go running and jump between us. Like it was pretty funny. And then the guy didn't know his information. He didn't know any of his data. He didn't know what the social contract really meant. He was kind of, he was dumb. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole thing about, about being a troll. You can have this really strong hatred for me and like you hate my guts. But the truth is, is that, you know, you just don't have anything for yourself going. So, you know, look, it, when you really research the social contract, what you find is that when it first comes around with Thomas Hobbes and, and John Locke and they're writing what's called the nature of man, the natural man, you know, the ideas and the philosophies of what man is and what kind of species we are, it's, it's you know, we're not, man is not looked upon as some glowing uh, Thomas Hobbes. See mankind is is this really rough uh, character. And I think we can see that with social media today. Now that everybody has a soapbox, they show that they're really ugly inside and mad and angry. And we get to see it right here firsthand. But not getting off track too much from the social contract, you know, Locke and Hobbes had these ideas that the sovereign or the power of the country should be held in a monarchy that it, it, you sh we should be ran by. Now, Locke wasn't for a monarch, but Thomas Hobbes was. He was for a centralized system of state-run government that would, would have absolute say. And the social contract meant that if you violated the laws of that land, the social contract, that you could be put to death. And Hobbes writes this clearly. So, you know, Rousseau is going to agree in that, but I don't want to get too much into Rousseau. I want to show you the clear divisions between the two ideologies, the fundamentals of the ideologies. And so, and so Thomas Hobbes, he's gonna, he's gonna believe that the man is, is really, you know, I say the term all the time, but people don't really understand what it means. You know, bellium omnium contra omnis. It's, it, it means a war of all men against all men. And Hobbes has the philosophy, and this, by the way, Hobbes has affected every single social contract, um, writer, ideologist, um, philosopher, every single social contract that has been created since Thomas Hobbes, Hobbes has had an influence in, as well as Jean-Jacques Rousseau. So now the vast differences are that the centralized power that Thomas Hobbes was so eager f to have because he believed that, well, you know from um, Lessons in Humanity, that's gonna be John Locke's book published in 1689, that people need a leader and need to be led. And so, that philosophy that Locke writes so eloquently in his book, you, you start to understand Hobbes' idea because Hobbes was as smart, if not smarter than John Locke. And so he had already written the idea in 1651 in Leviathan that man had to live under the rule of law and had to be controlled by law. And if you violated law, you would be put to death. So, so then now what happens is, uh, uh, Jean Jacques Rousseau, he's Swiss. He's going to come, ar come around. To, uh, I think he's, was he 17, 17? Is that what he was? So, so he's, he's going to come around and I think he dies in 1774. If I, if I remember correctly, I, I used to have him on a wall. And so I always saw his date of birth. It's been a few minutes. And so, John Jacques Rousseau is going to revolutionize this idea of what the social contract means. 
because he has completely different ideas than Hobbes and Locke. And he says that the people should have should, should have to live under the rule of law and there should be the rule of law in the social contract, but they should have a say in those laws. Now, this is a philosophy that had not been accepted previously. This wasn't something that was A-OK -okay before. And so Rousseau's concept that, that people should have a say in the laws that they're going to be governed with, this is a revolutionary idea in history, period. It's, it's, it's an unbelievable idea that the, the entire will of the people could be done. And it even goes into um, a majority of the people only. And this is going to be um, in Hobbes again. But, but now, now Rousseau is going to say that the power of the sovereign of the, the government relies in the people. That's, that's where Rousseau comes from. So Hobbes has the idea that the government is the power. The government has all the power and they dictate laws to us. Sorry about that. I can't see who's in there. So, so people have to understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so when I, when that guy came up to me today and I asked him and I asked him about the social contract, he, he didn't, he didn't really have an answer. Hey Mark, what's going on, dude? Good to see you, man. He, he didn't really have an answer. And so, so you start to look at it and you go, well, then who are these people who are the, the haters They're They don't have it. The stuff I just rattled off, you know, if you've heard that, you know, if, if you learned that previously, then you were really reading and paying attention. But if you haven't heard that before, then, you know, you're learning something new because there's, and then Immanuel Kant's social contract is gonna be even more different than that. And then Karl Marx's social contract is gonna be even more different than that. So, so as you go down the line, you start to really understand that the people who are who are throwing peanuts from the peanut gallery, they they literally don't have any education. And when I asked them, when I asked the gentleman, which social contract are you talking about? He says the American social contract. And I said, there is no American social contract. What are you talking about? There's a Swiss philosopher named Jean-Jacques Rousseau who wrote his social contract in French, published in English. That's, it's, it's just, it's just annoying. You know, it's like, come to me with something smart. You know, it's, it, it's the same thing with the, with the other people. They, they just don't come with any knowledge. And so it, it, you, you don't, you don't think that, that, that I amassed the following I had on TikTok because, uh, uh, because of, of, of cop watching or because of auditing. Nope. I, I didn't do a single audit. I mean, I had some, I had, of course I did some, but that wasn't what the TikTok channel was about. It was just about the knowledge I put on the wall. And John Jock Rousseau's social contract was one of those. I am really, really tired. Cannot wait to get some sleep tonight. I'm exhausted. I probably, I look tired because I am tired. I cannot wait to go to sleep. I am absolutely spent. And, and, you know, <sighs> courts tomorrow morning. So we have that court tomorrow at the uh, Tahlequah Courthouse. So that goes down tomorrow. So that's, uh, that's good. There's, it's, it's, you know, just so you know, when you are going up against the powers that be and you're filming it and you're live streaming it and you're talking about it and there's people approaching you and this person coming at you and this one, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's pretty hard. You know, every second, if you make a wrong decision, you're cooked. If you make a wrong decision, 
when I'm in that moment and that cop is right there and I'm, I'm having a dialogue with this cop about what he's doing, every single thing that I say or do matters. And so, so it's the same thing there. You guys saw that today. Um, the, the troll called the cops and tried to press charges on me for assault. He tried to he, he tried to fill out an assault report against me. You guys saw from rights on video exactly what happened. Pretty pretty, but so every single second that I'm there in that moment dealing with those elements outside of myself is a is a risk. It's a high risk, and you know. It only takes one of these police officers to decide that that's going to be his last day on the force and and do whatever he's going to do. You never know which one of these guys is walking around a ticking time bomb ready to burst. And you know I'm right. I'm not lying. You know it. But you know we see the violence where it comes from in our country. We see the violence, you know, Deborah's, uh, Deborah's videos, you know, I, I had to rewatch her videos yesterday and she didn't want to give up her license. She didn't, she, she, she was, she, she wanted to show him the license, but she didn't want to give up the license. And that one sticking point, it was the difference between her getting physically beaten on or possibly just driving home that that one sticking point because she did not comply and so when you don't comply to these guys and their policy and their procedure is that if you don't comply he then says I'm going to extract her you're going to extract her does that go in a little flavor bottle with uh, with McDougal or McDonald or whatever it is over it? What was that called? That really popular uh, imitation vanilla, imitation maple. What was that? McCormick's? That's what it was called? Is that what he was going to extract her? He was extracting her from the vehicle. Thank you. know, Thank God for you, brother. Thank God for you to, 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 to be here to extract that woman extract her get her you know what she's not going to show you her driver's license don't wait her out don't don't say i'm going to call the tow truck and impound your car don't do that don't tell her that you're going to sit there for as long as she wants to sit there don't do that you better extract her you better you better extract her yeah and i and i see that i i see that and then there, there's that, um, when you sign your driver's license now, what is that called? It's called, um, I just saw it a second ago. I think someone said something about it. Where implied consent, that's what it's called, implied consent. It, now, if you're unwilling to take a breathalyzer or you're unwilling to take a blood test, then the state because when you signed your driver's license, you signed implied consent. You, you implied consent that they can strip your driver's license if you refuse to take a breath test or a blood test. What, what, I, 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 that, that's mind blowing to me. That's absolutely mind blowing to me. Implied consent. And I, I want to, I'm going to learn more about it, but you know, it's just, it's just, what's this? What's that? I'm exhausted. I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. You guys know me, man. If I sit and stream long enough, it's all—it's—it's it's, it's, sometimes it's just inevitable. 
Yeah, you guys, everybody hit the like button. We got 170 people in here, not enough likes. Everybody hit the like button. Take your finger and just whack it like that. So Deborah, when, when they pulled her out of the car, they shot her with the taser in the neck and then the neck uh, electrocution didn't work. And they also shot Deborah in the head with the taser in her scalp. They shot her with the taser in the scalp. So it's like, <laughs> we have to change the system. The system has to be changed. It's not gonna work like this. There, there's, there's, no, there's no empathy, there's no humanity to this system. And if you ever don't want, hey Vincent Photography, how you doing? Um, if you ever don't want to comply, then you know what'll happen to you? You'll be tasered in the neck and in the head. They tasered Deborah in the head. They actually tasered in the, in the skull. And they've tasered her in the neck. This one didn't work, but the one down here did. And then they choked her unconscious. And then we don't have that bit of the tape. All the, the the whole interaction was like an hour and a half, and we only have like 15 minutes of the entire interaction. We don't have the rest of the footage. You, you know, the cops 10 years ago, they used to get away with saying to us, they used to get away with saying, well, we don't know what happened before that. So you saw that on camera, this is 10 years ago but we don't know what happened before. And now they're still doing that kind of stuff with like, oh, look, he could have been armed. His arm was coming forward. Your arm's coming forward? You can't even walk without your arm coming forward. So, I, 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 how can we possibly believe the cops that did that to Deborah without the, all of the body cam footage? How, how is that possible? How, how, do, how, do, how do we not, not get to see the entire event? And it's just like what happened to Jalen Walker. Where, where is the video after that? They, they said, oh, and all the officers were sequestered. Okay, show us the body cam footage that they didn't turn off, that they kept running after they shot someone. Why isn't that the policy? Why isn't that in legislation? How come that's not in legislation? That that they can't turn off body cam after shots are fired. There's no turning off body cameras. That should be the policy. Why isn't Jeff hates pigs? Jeff hates pigs. 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 Uh, thanks, Vincent. Appreciate you, man. God bless, brother. God bless, man. Jeff hates pigs. <laughs> Good times, Mikey. What's going on? What's going on, Scrub? How you guys doing? Uh, thanks, Vincent. Appreciate you, man. Bruce, what? How you guys doing, Gloria? Smile, Kyle. Yeah, it's it's uh it's pretty crazy. What don't you don't you want to see? Don't. Oh, my, my non-self-driving car just slammed the brakes on. My, I, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I'm not, I'm not steering. Is that a corner? Yes, it is. Are we going right around the corner? Yes, we are. I'm not steering. It's a non-self-driving car though. I got it. Okay. Okay. It's, but it's a non-self-driving car. That's a lead. Did my car just slammed on the brakes, didn't it? Did my car just slam on the brakes? Sure did. Slam on the brakes. I felt it. it went boop, 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 and it slammed the brakes on. So, that being said, <laughs> so, why, and I, and I think this has to be a bigger discussion. After the cops kill somebody, they cannot turn off any body cameras on the scene. 
why would you ever turn off cameras after somebody is shot? I think I think we need to focus on that. That that needs to be something that, that we can do now. The changes that man, what is going on? What is what is going on? I, I want to turn around so bad. I'm just freaking exhausted. I am just exhausted. I'm just exhausted. I, I need I need one of those. And um, you know, things are good. Things are good. Th th things 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 are things are okay in my heart and my head. You know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna. You know, it's ridiculous how, how, how much of myself I've had to put out on the table, but I'm going to try to keep my personal life as personal as I can, you know, but I'll just tell you, things are good. Things are good, you know, and that's, and, I, and that's how I'm going to do it. You know, I'm not going to get into my personal life. I, I already did that. I already, you know, broadcast my ex-girlfriend's phone call. You know, we already did those things. So I'm going to try to just keep up. Uh, keep my head on there's my non self-driving car beeping and slowing down again oh so back to Rousseau so now what Rousseau's gonna do that is totally different is he's gonna say that the people need to have a representative the people need to be representative and that's where you're gonna get your representative form of government John Jacques Rousseau, it, when you talk about a representative form of government, did not exist before John Jacques Rousseau. The, you had people who claimed that they were the, the nobles for this land and, and this was the leader of these people over here. But the idea that the government would be represented by a, a, a person who would go in and do the bidding for you with the government that was Rousseau. Everything else, John Locke and Hobbes was both about a centralized form of government. That was real statism. That was, I mean, big time. And so, so then Rousseau comes out with these ideas and then he's going to counter um, Hobbes' philosophy on what mankind actually is. He's going to say that man is amazing and beautiful and he's he's kind of like this, this interesting character that feels empathy for others that that cries when he sees something bad happen that that he really is kind of this dope meandering guy wandering around you know will hunt and fish and mate and and those things but but man isn't also bad is rousseau's philosophy and that man should have a say in the laws that are going to govern his his area he rousseau also had the idea he would never have approved of the United States. He was for multiple small democracies. Sound familiar? Uh, like the 50 states? He was for multiple small democracies, but he was for a homogenous. Uh, so he, you know, he lived in a time of slavery where slavery was very normal. So when you read some of Jean Jacques Rousseau's writing and he talks about slaves uh, working, so in a homogenous society, where the slaves could serve the masters and they could sit around and have long-winded conversations about democracy and how to make democracy a better place, a better thing, then you're like, yeah, but you just talked about the slaves serving the master, so you lost me there. But you gotta remember the time. You know, the big push to end slavery is gonna be Charles de Montesquieu. Charles de Montesquieu is the one who's going to Right, the books checks and balances, and and he's all about. Uh, I believe it's called two treaties of Gov two treaties of Gov no. That's going to be John Locke's book. Um, uh, Charles de Montesquieu's book defines checks and balances. So so so, but th but this is Montesquieu's big idea. Charles de Montesquieu, he he's the one that's that's all about abolishing slavery, and his book is going to come out seventeen fifty. 1751 I think published in English and Charles de Montesquieu he only went by Montesquieu he's the guy that says abolish slavery and and just so you know if you ever read Noah Feldman's book on letters between Madison and Jefferson um, 
it's like it's like a, another small edition of the Federalist Papers that Noah Feldman put together. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's Noah Feldman. Ian Milheiser wrote a different book. But but if you ever want to read a book about the inner thoughts and processes of of James Madison and 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 Thomas Jefferson, the the letters back and forth that Noah Feldman publishes and puts in his book. Um, you know, you really get an insight to to what they were thinking and how they were thinking it. And then when you when you read that, then you start to say to yourself, well, did they feel the pressure of Montesquieu wanting to abolish slavery? Because they're going to plagiarize checks and balances directly from Montesquieu's book. And that's going to be the executive, judicial and legislative branches of our government today. The exact setup of our government is a combination of Locke, Rousseau, and Montesquieu. Montesquieu's checks and balances, obviously. So, so, but the thing is, in his, in his writings, uh, Montesquieu's writings in his book, he goes into the the atrocity and the stain and the 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 stain on humanity that slavery is, you know, and so. So when you when you start to talk about Charles de Montesquieu, you know, he the pressure and then you start talking about the founding fathers. George Washington gave up all of his slaves when he died. Uh, uh, I, I don't think Jefferson ever did. I don't think he did give up his slaves when he died. But I think that, I, you know, I don't want to say it because I don't remember properly. But there were several founding fathers who gave up their slaves when they died. And why did they do that? Charles de Montesquieu. That's why they did it. The amount of pressure that this great thinker had put upon the founding fathers. And then by the way, the South, the South themselves, they helped put the nail on the coffin of ending slavery uh, with the 1850 compromise with the 1850 compromise, you know, when, when you could actually see blacks get tracked down from the South into the North and they go drug back and they're destroying this guy. And it, you know, it was the big, it was the, the beginning of the end, but so of slavery. And so, so, so anyway, so I, I, I can, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I can just sit here and ramble and and there's there's so much more to come out of my mouth that I haven't said yet you know there's, there's just a, a there's just an amazing amount of information I was reading before I was in front of this camera and so so I, I want you guys to understand it and 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 I want you guys to understand the most important thing and and, and this 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 ridiculous childish um, thing that that happened here on on uh, YouTube with with you know am I a statist am I not a statist you know I, I if the definition of statist is that you want a government a, a government that's going to help the country flourish and and cre and create and do things that that government should do yeah I do want one of those do I want this form of tyrannical government? I don't, I don't know who does, you know, and by the way, just so you know, in the videos that I put in the comments, you know, John Jacques Rousseau, he did not believe, and that was not a part of his social contract that one man rules over another man. Matter of fact, Rousseau writes the opposite of that, that no one man has dominion over another man. So that's the, that's the whole idea of, you know, the, uh, and John Locke's philosophy of the social contract, even though John Locke believed in a centralized form of government, John Locke, his number one principle was liberty first. And John Locke said that the only reason you have a government, the only purpose of government is to protect the rights of the citizens under the social contract. That, that was John Locke's philosophy on his social contract that he wrote. He also wrote a social contract. So I asked that dunce cap today, you know, who, what social contract are you talking about? And he was like the American one. I said, well, there's not really an American one. I don't know what you're talking about. 
he doesn't know that Jean Jacques Rousseau is Swiss and that he had five children that he gave up into an orphanage and that he had an affair with an older rich woman who uh, worked as his benefactor for his life and because of his aggressive liberal ideas that people should have power Jean-Jacques Rousseau often had to flee and run because he would have been killed <laughs> sound familiar <laughs> wow I'm, I'm talking about this out loud because I'm just spitting out information I have in my head and uh, I believe Jean-Jacques Rousseau was in was he in Belgium or was he in was he in France but the, 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 the time came he had to leave. And Jean-Jacques Rousseau, whose social contract affects every single person on earth, the social contract that Jean-Jacques Rousseau wrote is a small part of every single social contract in the world except for the Barbary Coast that does not have a social contract. So, uh, but Jean-Jacques Rousseau, when you have big ideas that could radically and fundamentally change the world, you're typically not celebrated when you're alive. As a matter of fact, I can even go further on Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Uh, <laughs> he, he didn't really get to see and experience the implementation of his social contract. He didn't get to, he didn't get to look out from a balcony and say, look what I have done. That did not happen for Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Similar with um, Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth um, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, the two women who fought for women's suffrage to get the right to vote, and neither one of them got to see that happen before 1920, when women got the right to vote with the 19th Amendment. So it, it's it's it's. Uh, You know, Booker T. Washington, Booker T. Washington, he's another character in history that really didn't get to see the only one, the only, the only man who really, okay, ready for this? Let's have, let's have a good time. For five points, who is known as the best writer in black history? Who is known as the best writer, the best philosopher in all of black history. There's one person who dramatically stands out over all the others. Can anybody tell me who that person is? Cue the Jeopardy music here. Can anybody tell me? Is that Work Lion? What's up, Work Lion? Good to see you, brother. It's been a minute. Just seeing you in the chat. Talking a little history work line, who is, who, who was the most prolific black writer in history and who, not MLK, who successfully petitioned Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass, super, super close. I'm thinking of someone else. I'm thinking of someone else. There's one other person. Nope, it's not Frederick Douglass. There's one other one. Tupac! Booker T. Washington was pretty amazing. There it is. There it is. Du Bois. Du Bois was was the best. He was the number he was he was the the, the writer of all writers. He, he really was. Let me, and I'm going to show you guys something that I'm going to read directly that comes from a quote from Du Bois that, that is electrifying. And I want to pull, I want to get into exactly here. W.E.B. Du Bois. This, this man, he, the, the, he successfully petitioned which president and how did W.E.B. Du Bois go to college? How did he go to college? You know, uh, it's, it's so funny.
W. E. B. Du Bois. I want to I want to give you something that I read that he wrote that when I was you know there's been times in my life where it's hard there's been times in my life it's been difficult when the rain is coming from every angle and it's cold and it's hard there's been times in my life it's been super super difficult and there's, there's, there, when you go through difficult times and you have to persevere, there, there is a saying from W.E.B. Du Bois that I heard when I was a kid and I didn't really actually understand the power of who this man was when I heard the quote. And I'll read it to you exactly. You are not, and yet you are. Your thoughts, your deeds, above all, your dreams still live. And I heard that when I was like 10 years old. And I, I had no idea what it meant because it says, you are not, and yet you are. And so I was like, what does that mean? Your thoughts, your deeds, above all, your dreams still live. And, you know, at the time in my life, I was going through, like, you know, I was going through, but it, it, it was, it was like, above all, your dreams still live. Like, the projection that you have in your mind of yourself is still there. Nobody can take away your shine. Only you can take away your shine. Only you can stop on your dreams. Your dreams still live. You are yet you are not. So, so you know, what does that mean exactly? Well, you are, but you, but you're, you're not, you're not living up to your full potential. You're not doing everything you can do. I had a big falling out with a friend, 2019, 2020, and we didn't talk for a long time. And then when we talked again, I told him, no, you were right. You were right. I was not being who I am. And that, that's what really helped me was going through that that really difficult time where my buddy and I had this huge falling out and I had to realize, man, you know, he's, he's wrong for being a dick that he was being a dick, but at the same time, he's right. I need to do more. I need to do more with my life. I need to utilize because it was 2020 and Breonna, I, I think Breonna's April 13th and, and George Floyd is May 20th. Those are the days those two people were killed. And so April 13th, when Breonna's executed, I don't remember my no knock raid. It, my mind blocks it out. My sister calls me and says, what's going on? How do you feel? She walks me through it. I've told the story a lot. And then I remember being no knock raided and I go through all those emotions. And then George Floyd is snuffed out right there in front of everybody. And, and, and we all watch it on, on, on TV. And uh, at that time I had a falling out with a very good friend and, 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 you know, we have since a uh, 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 patch that up, but, but, but then he had said some things to me that was like, Hey, Chili, you can do more than you're doing. And he wasn't even talking about this, this crusade to change our country. He wasn't even talking about that. I have the skill sets. I can, I can, I can run anything, you know, I can, I can do anything if I want to do it. So. You know, he wanted me to go back to being an executive and making, you know, buku bucks and, and, you know, going out in Hollywood and, and going out with, with, you know, beautiful women and having a, <laughs> this really, really fun life. And, you know, one of your best buddies who was really good at that with you for a very long time. Now he's not doing that anymore. And instead, you know, he's, he's doing this other thing. And so he was like, Hey, you know, you can do more than what you're doing. And so when I, when I cut that buddy loose because I had to go on my own path, 
you know, I remembered that quote from W.E.B. Du Bois and I put him on my wall when I when I built the wall of education, the, the history of institutional racism on the on the wall. And and if you you know, you know what you could do? Just put in W.E.B. Du Bois quotes and just just go and start reading W.E.B. Du Bois quotes. Just read his quotes. This man lived 98 years. He lived 98. I think he dies in, I want to say 1966. I think he's born in, I think he's born during slavery. I think he's born in 1964 and then 1864. Someone can correct me on the years. I don't have that kind of, I have a memory of, of knowledge, but my dyslexia messes up the numbers. So, so, you know, but just put in W.E.B. Du Bois quotes and you will find a man who, when, he's one of those few guys that got to see the fruits of his labor, you know, when he's going to, to Harvard in uh, 18, 18, 95, eight, I'm sorry, 1890, somewhere in there. Uh, when he's going to, uh, did he go to Yale or Harvard? He went to an Ivy League school. I, I asked the question earlier, how did he go to school? Who funded him? And so, so I, I don't want to tell you guys everything. I want you to have to look it up. There's, there's stuff you should just look up the information because it's, it's interesting. And, but he is one, he, matter of fact, I think, I think, I'm sure there's historians that know more than I do, but I believe that he's the first black man to petition through a writ, which a, a petition, a note, a writ, it's all the same. So, so a, 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 even a memo, he petitioned the president and the president took action based on his petition. Because what's your first big five amendments? Speech, religion, speech, religion. I was, I was just, I was waiting for someone to write the first big five. What are those first big five freedoms in the first amendment? The first big five freedoms, the, the first big five freedoms. What, what are they? What are those first big five freedoms? Press assembly petition, two more, two more, two more. We need religion and assembly. There it is, Dan. Thank you. Okay, so W. E. B. Can someone tell me who W. E. B. Du Bois? No, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys I'm, I'm gonna let you guys look it up. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys look it up. I'm gonna let you guys look it up because W. E. B. Du Bois was was, you know, he's the first black man to ever petition the president and the petition to grant his to grant his petition. Imagine that being a black man and writing a letter to the president of the United States and the president not only responds, but takes action based on your petition. Just, I mean, imagine that in today's world. If, if, if the president follows you back on Twitter, you lose your mind. <laughs> if the president follows you back on Twitter, then you absolutely lose your mind. So it's like, it's like, you know, you know, hey, Work Lion, if you haven't seen the last couple audits that, uh, that 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 I did, man. The the last couple audits I've done have just been fire. They they've been just fire, really. A couple couple of the best audits I've done. So if you haven't seen them, it, it's at two hours and fifteen minutes. So it's quite a ways into that to that to that uh, video. But but man, that was a good audit. And then I'm gonna have I'm gonna re-release that tomorrow in a short little clip. That same thing. The, I'm just going to re-release the little clip of that so people can find it so people can find it and watch it and it'll be easier to see there you are now I can see the comments on this screen but I can't I can't see them over here oh I know it I know it uh yeah Dan I think you're 100 percent correct I'm gonna do that tomorrow I just absolutely need uh, 10 or 15 hours of sleep because I've gone too hard for too many days and I need to catch up on sleep. But I gotta be at court tomorrow morning, uh, so it's gonna be hard. Oh, right on, Work Lion. Right on, brother. Happy to hear it, dude. Happy to hear it. Happy to hear it. Glad, glad everybody's here. Glad everybody's here. And, and so it's like, oh, this one's, this one's starting to die now. 
Yeah, I'm going to do it, Dan. I'm going to break that one down. I mean, uh, that cop going in handcuffs, that was that was quite a thing, wasn't it? I mean, that was that was quite a thing. It, it was it's it still kind of wows me a little bit. And I got to go back to Colburn and see if he wants to do something more because because, you know, that dude, I mean, if he was willing to put him on right there on the side of the road with no planning or anything, I mean, could you imagine what he'd be willing to do if we actually, it just sucks because you got to go get permissions from the people above and the people above, they don't want anything to change. They, they don't want anything to change. They want it exactly how it is, you know. It's just, uh... oh, is that right? Is that right? Jonathan Mitchell music. The troll said I would never, ever, ever get a cop to go in handcuffs. It, it, it looks like I did. It, it looks like I did get the cops to go in, in handcuffs. It, it, that's what it looks like. I, I didn't know that that's what they, that's what they did. You know, I, I had no idea. So that's funny that, you know, and, and I think that we're going to see some things happen. And, and just so you guys know, you know, we're, we're right over the target. If, if people hate us this much, we are right over the target. We are hovering right over it. You know, you know, imagine when we get Colburn and actually put him in cuffs. What's going on, Travesty? Good to see you, man. Good to see Travesty Media in the trenches. Travesty Media is down in the trenches fighting these trolls in the comments. Big shout out to you, Travesty Media. Thank you, Kim. Good to see you. Um, it, good to see you, Kim. It was it, it, Sly. How you doing? But 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 Travesty Media, you get down in the Travesty Media is down in the comment section throwing knees and elbows like he is throwing knees and elbows on these trolls. You should read his comments or her comments. I'm not sure. Uh, um, <laughs> the idiot man I'm so sorry dude so it's like it's like I appreciate that travesty because we have to fight them back they are they are they are not allowed to win my comment section the trolls are not allowed to win in my comment section they are not I'm not gonna have it I'm gonna fight them back and and I see people like travesty media and smile Kyle and uh and, and, and uh, loose, loose, loose gun and, and sly shies in there. Lively reports. What's going on? Yeah. Gloria's in there. Gloria's in there fighting knees and elbows in the comment section, you know, with these trolls. It's great. Jeff hates pigs is in there. I see Jeff hates pigs is in there. Yeah, I see. I see. I see that for sure. Je you know, I, I appreciate it because I don't want them to dominate my comment section. And there's just more trolls than there is love. It's sad, but they don't. V Boyer's in the comment section, and there, DJ Smith. What's up, bud? Vic Ferrari. What's up, Playboy? You know, it's like, it's like, we got to be. It's like I, I'm throwing punches back at them, and I'm just telling them over and over. There's no proof. There's there's nobody crying besides the poor mother of of Caleb Slay. You know, that's the only person crying and saying I I. I wore a towel in front of her 10 year old daughter. Yeah, I wore a towel, all covered up and a towel on. Pretty normal. Stay at someone's house, take a shower. You walk from the bathroom to your room. <laughs> it's pretty normal. <laughs> and then uh, I don't want to get off on that tangent, but yeah, you know, we, we have to, that's how I fight back against the trolls though. I just say, there's absolutely no proof of anything you're saying. You're just making things up as you go. That's how I fight back. I've seen David Turner in there a couple times. I've seen David Turner in there throwing elbows. I've seen him in there tossing some punches, you know, some, some, uh, just some words, you know, they're for free speech. Well, you know, I think there's more people who love than hate. You know, they're just, you know, we, that's just not our focus. I'm busy doing other stuff. 
I mean, as you guys can see, I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, but I have driven back and forth between Tulsa and where I'm going. I have driven back and forth six, seven times. It's an hour and a half, two hours each way. This week, I've done that. And so I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I need sleep. I need, I need, I need, I need 10 hours. You can see my face. You can see my, I need 10 hours of sleep. I'm, I don't, I'm not going to get it tonight. Tomorrow night, I might get it. Because I got to be at court tomorrow morning for Deborah. I'm not going to let her down, you know. We all need support, you know. Speaking of that, you know, I want to throw up a prayer for my buddy uh, in the Midwest. There's a, there's a buddy of mine in the Midwest. And uh, I hope that I don't have to tell you who it is. But there's a buddy of mine in the Midwest who just hit a real, real bad patch. And uh, so let's, let's, let's pray for him. He's a, a great guy. So I just found that out today. We'll see. We'll see. I was supposed to get up there and see him. And uh, that's been put on hold. So, you know, I've just, you know... It is what it is. Life's hard, man. Life's life's not life's not easy. You know, I was talking to um, I was talking to um, um, JMM. What was that question, man? I, I'm just I don't get any. I only get comments on my other phone, so I have to stop and look at my other phone. I didn't see the question, but I'll I'll try to answer it. But I, I don't know. My voice on tape. What are you talking about, Kim? I uh, the, the the one that Larry Flanoy made. I I pretty much I'll put that on my own channel. There's there's absolutely nothing wrong with the, with that tape. Nothing. Um. You know, Tonkin. I I I know that you don't understand modern technology. But let me let me just let me just show you something, Tonkin. Let me just show you something. You, you see that road? How it's on a bend right there? Uh, the road's bending. You can see the bend. I'm not touching the steering wheel. How's that possible? Oh my God, Tonkin. Oh my God. You see? Because I don't have to. It's 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 got it's got its own steering system in it, Tonkin. What's up with you? What's up with you? What's up with you? What's going on, Playboy? What's going on? I'm just looking at some of the comments on my other phone. Yeah, well, on the open country like this, where the car will break for me. So, I mean, just so you guys know, like, not only see see the curve right there. You see the curve right here. The car will take the curve, but it also does the gas and the brake. I don't I don't have to touch anything at all. Now, see, it's asking me to touch the wheel. Now, just give it a little correction right there, but it's it's still taking a corner. I'm still going around a corner right here, and it'll keep me a certain distance from the car in front of me. You see how that works? It's really cool. I didn't even know that when I got the car. Now it'll drive like this for 15, 30 seconds. No gas, no brake, no nothing. And it'll just do it. So, you know, and I've driven across the country and back a couple times now. So it works. It, I, I don't even have to hit the brake. It'll hit the brake for me. Earlier, a bunch of cars slowed down real quick. And, um, So uh, everybody, the Kim the troll came in and said that she heard something somewhere where I may have contradicted myself. You know, Kim, I'm going to say that I may have contradicted myself on this talk about the social contract. I may have made a mistake, Kim. I may have made a mistake during this uh, hour and 15 minute broadcast. I could have made a mistake on this one, Kim. There's a possibility that I made an error here too. That's, it, did you did you catch me in a contradiction, Kim? You caught me? How bad was it? Who was the bleeding babe? Who was the wounded child, Kim? I contradicted myself? I probably contradicted myself in the last 10 minutes. We're walking contradictions, Kim. You're over on my channel asking me, did you contradict yourself one time? Is that really your, your 
Is that really your metric of if I'm a good person or a bad person? That's your metric on whether or not I contradicted myself one time? Where is the victim, Kim? Where's the dog that's injured? Where's the puppy that's stolen? Something, Kim. You know? No, let's not, dude. Let's, let's not, let's, let's not. We will just proceed. We will just proceed. So, anyway. You know, I put the links for the social contract in the in the description. So, you know, I want to make sure that, that you guys can 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 learn the same things that I know. You know, I, I want you guys to, to be able to So, you know, sometimes towards the end of the, the when I when I talk, uh, I'll take a few minutes at the end. And I just, you know, I acknowledge some of the members and stuff like that, um, you know. And so it's like, but then you get people who come in and just say ridiculous things to try to throw me off track. But, you know, I pretty much said everything I wanted to say. And now I just want to want to just say hello to a few of the members. I can see a few people in here. So Travis D Media, good to see you, man. Michelle, thanks for coming. I appreciate you coming by, Andrew. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just the, remember Debo Cruz. I appreciate you, dude. Witness zoo. Nice to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. And so we shall proceed. We shall proceed. I cannot wait, honestly, to get a good night's sleep. I am absolutely exhausted. And and with this time, it's only six o'clock. That'll, that'll give me at least 10 hours of sleep because I'm gonna go to sleep by eight or nine and I'm gonna get a nice good night's sleep before the, the hearing tomorrow. Guero, good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Good to see you. Nice to see everybody. Nice to see everybody. It's good to see you, buddy. Slash I. Zen, what's going on, Zen? How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Good to see you, Mandy. Smile, Kyle. Does anybody sleep to brown noise? Have you guys Have you guys been... You know, I've been sleeping to brown noise for the past few months. Does anybody go to sleep? There's white noise, pink noise. There's all these different kinds of noises. And for a while, I was sleeping to white noise. But now, I go to sleep to brown noise. Have you guys ever heard of that before? Has anybody ever heard of that? And just so you know, if you can't sleep, that brown noise, man, it puts you out. It does me anyway. It's it's really, really, really cool. You know? Yeah, I mean, I... I yeah, so, so brown noise is just like a fan, but it, it kind of sounds like an airplane. And I have, I have two phones, so I just use both of my phones at the same time. And... It puts a stereo of like an airplane around me and I sleep like a baby. If I don't have the two phones running though, and I don't have that, the, the stereo, I mean, I can do a single, I can do a fan as well. One of those, one of those fans, woo, 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 woo. I can do one of those that, that always puts me to sleep, but it has to be pretty loud. Where's 30 more minutes of driving. I need some like contract. Are you still there? Okay, I got you guys back. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still standing better than I ever did. Looking like a true survivor. Feeling like a little kid. Anyway, listen, I'll get the flock out of here. You guys, uh, I want, hey, what's up? What's up, D-Man Bear? How you doing? Zen, good to see you, man. A potential criminal. How you doing? Listen, I'm going to get the flock out of here. I'm about to hit some really rough country right here. As you know, the internet's going to pop on and off a lot of times. So I will say goodbye now. Thank you guys for coming with me today. Remember, tomorrow morning, we are at the actual hearing for Deborah tomorrow. A work line, good to see you. Jeebus, good to see you. Sly, Kim, Hagler, KP, good to see everybody. Good to see all of you. Dan, thank you for coming. All the moderators, thank you so much. I'm super grateful. Greg, God bless you. I appreciate you, man. Good to see everybody. I'm glad you guys came. And just remember, under any circumstances, no matter what the situation, we don't stop. We don't stop. We don't stop. And I'll see you guys on the next one. All right? 
Have a good night. Thanks, guys. Later, Gator.